Welcome to Happy Times and Places, a Doctor Who episode commentary in which I, Toby Haydock, try to see if I can guess what my special guest's favourite things about an episode are. Hello Toby, my name's Alex Moore and I work in locations for both TV and film. You can find me on Twitter at AlexMoore99. The story that I have chosen is The Time Monster. They call me Mr. Boombastic, say me fantastic. Uh, but in other news, we're about to watch uh, episode six of The Time Monster, which I think I have to go back to episode selection on the DVD that I'm watching. Here we are. So episode six, The Minotaur has arrived. Let's see it mine. Press play now. Well, of course, there's a bit of a pause if you do episode. Here we go. Love this title sequence. I love I love the graphics and and the themes. Um, of of certainly of the of the sixties and seventies. In in particular. Um, I don't think there's a, there's any I, I I dislike, but I really love. I think they're all of a of a pretty equal equal quality for the the first um, right up to the Starfield, which I like for different reasons. But I think the I think the, I like the abst abstract nature of the uh, of the sixties and seventies titles. That's that's Darth Vader. He's in good shape, isn't he? Oh. Lord Kreto's being angry at a door again. Uh, yeah, that's that's what Lord Kreto does. He gets angry at doorway, angry in doorways, coming through a door, stopping people coming through a door. That's what Lord Kreto does. It's amazing seeing this in such sort of cleaned up quality. I remember, I remember this bit because when I was briefly part of a fan group, we we did um, we did sort of videos advertising the episodes that people could watch next month or whatever and people voted and things like that and i remember we used a clip of the the beginning of the time monster six i think people did choose to watch that um uh, and isn't that interesting that atlantis has tridents in oh well done that was well cool you ujid the guard and then snapped his tripod oh i like i sort of like that uh that uh the, the, the sort of camera move, the indistinct camera uh, move. Because this this is a funny old scene, though, isn't he? So Joe is in a oh hippie ass. Oh bless you, man. He's going to do something brave. Um, so of course, because he's done this on film, it means he's actually he, he does his death scene before he does anything else. Oh, I've just seen his pants and the odd pube. Um, I did, I did on cleaned up, but that was uh, this. I mean, this is sort of silly, but it's John Pertwee doing. You know, he's against the Minotaur. He's got a red cloak, so he does bullfighting. The, but, but, <laughs> but. But that bit where he just steps to one side and the Minotaur runs through a wall. Uh, Doctor isn't, hasn't even bothered to look to see if Hippias is dead. He's fallen through some tinfoil that's had the sound of glass shattering. The Crystal of Kronos on videotape. Um, wow, that was well. That was quite an ambitious sequence. Um, <laughs> um, but I got a kick as a kid because I think I'd read about Myths and Legends, which is the title of the box set that this DVD is on. Uh, it's got a very ghosting quality. I think it's it's been hard to clean up this one. It's not the... They could do with finding a better copy of the Time Monster. Because um, it's... Is it, oh, oh, I think this one. Is this done from a black and white film print that they put the colour over because the NSTC is not so good. It's a dog's dinner, put it like this, in terms of uh, uh, what they've had to do to restore the pictures. But um, I'd just direct you to um, 
the restoration team have done write-ups saying exactly Lord Crito's at the door again. Um, does he get? He doesn't even get to come in. Oh, mate! It's all right, Derek. Uh, you'll 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 shine in this scene. <laughs> Open the door, bow, and shut it again. And you sort of go and you wait at home and you wait for that to be shown. And you go, well, yeah, yeah you could, I mean, you could see me. Mum, yeah, I'm in. Mean, I, was, I was in that other scene, Mum, didn't you see? Oh, an actor's life. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it, it's really interesting, all the sort of different sources that the various Pertwee episodes have come from and how they decide um, if they've got multiple copies. Because I, I do seem to think there's an engineering print or a black and white film print of episode six that they've rather than reverse standards i'm not gonna i'm not gonna blather because it is written down somewhere by people that know what they're talking about but it's certainly worth a, a look um if you're interested in um why some of these episodes look of, of varying qualities this this actually looks okay but the scene the scene um in the crystal of chronos was very sort of ghosty and blurry She's got fiery eyes, uh, Ingrid Pitts. You can tell you can tell why she got cast in those sorts of parts because it's the genuine article, the sort of fiery uh, temperament. You know, she you, you wouldn't mess with her. That's why I was a bit scared of her being on the commentary. But of course, uh, now I go. Well, I would have. It would have been a great honour to have met Ingrid Pitt, who's who. My goodness, if you read her autobiography, the life. God, the, the the terrible thing she had to go through to get to be, you know, to get to where she got uh, would have would have certainly felled me and probably felled most twenty first century Nambi Bambis. So I salute Ingrid Pitt. She was a a remarkable woman, and I, you know, I shouldn't have been, you know, I shouldn't have been nervous about meeting her. I should have put my nerves to one side. Well, it didn't matter. I didn't have a choice. But um, I would have benefited from meeting her. She seemed like a fascinating woman. But I think she had to swim for her life, didn't she? In the, she escaped from a concentration camp. Something like terrible stuff that she went through. Ah, uh, this is the moment of beauty. The, the, Pert, we liked this, and it's interesting because is he talking about Campo Rinpoche, who comes uh, at the end of his era? In which case, the old man that he's talking about is played by the same actor who's just about to come through the doors, King Dalios. So, uh, which, of course, they couldn't have known at the time because Planet of the Spiders hadn't been written, let alone cast. But that's quite a nice bit of symmetry that the old man the doctoring is remembering has the same face and voice as the old man who's sadly about to uh, uh, be imprisoned with them. But this is, this always reminds me of the remarkable Dennis Potter interview he did with Melvin Bragg when he was dying uh, and sipping on liquid morphine because he was in such pain. And he talked about looking at the blossom uh, uh, outside of his window and he talks about it being the blossomist blossom. And, and Potter, for somebody who would fight and kick and bite, was also achingly sentimental as as often quite waspish uh, men can be and, and I think he did and he, he was a very complicated man and his dramas are full of those complications and his his terrible contradictions of um, you know soppy romantic love and an absolute fear and disgust of women it's he's a curious curious mix um, but from a complex psychology I, he had psoriasis I have psoriasis I know I know what it's like to be imprisoned in that uh, painful prison. Uh, uh, but I don't know if that he was a nice man, but he was a good writer. But that that blossomist blossom is uh, is when Pertwee talks here about the daisiest daisy. Uh, and if, if John Pertwee stuck in a prison cell in Atlantis in a Doctor Who story that nobody loves that much can remind me of Dennis Potter that contradictory uh, difficult uh, angry but sentimental but nostalgic but compassionate erudite but mean that writer who's all of those things 
uh, then that can only be good. This is Melville Jones as the guard. Is this the, the, the Cyberman later on? Uh, yeah, now you see, I, I don't think saying out of my way... It shows that for all Dalios being a wise old geezer, he's a bit, he's a bit of, you know... He's the, He's he's the man, isn't he? He's the patriarchy, although he's being mean to a, an, another man, in the, the guard. But uh, you know, showing your true colours there, Dalios. That for you know, you do you know, being mean to the guard. Although the guard, I mean, the guard hasn't has the guard been ordered to kill him? In uh, otherwise, he slightly exceeded his authority. Yes, we know you. We, you know, we told you to imprison the king. How is he? But he called me slave, so I twatted him with my trident. That's what I was going to say. Tridents um, are also prof um, in great supply in the Atlantis of the Underwater Menace. So uh, I, I suppose because Neptune, god of the sea, has a trident. So if you live under the sea, you're going to have a... Although this Atlantis isn't under the sea. Um, but that's... Ah, that's, oh, you see. That's that's called... Uh, 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 oh, there's a there's ah Lord Crito is now doing st uh, staff stamping acting. Okay, so he's the door, he's the door guy and the staff guy. Okay, that's reasonable. What's the part? Staff announcements and uh, what staff announcements? What tell, you know, saying who's going to be guarding things and who's doing the work shift? No, no staff as in banging a stick. Uh, the master looks great, doesn't he? Uh, Lord Master, yeah, very, yeah. He uh, he owns it, doesn't he? Is is he he carries himself off well in the court, but no, because they've all got tridents, and yet Atlantis hasn't gone under the sea. It's self-fulfilling prophecy that if you're going to deck yourself out in the uh, accoutrements of the underwater don't be surprised if you're consigned to the inky depths by a space-time budgerigar that's all i'm saying oh that crystal of i wonder which crystal of chronos the man has in his garage didn't even ask him another missed opportunity Oh, yes, Doctor. Oh, no, Galea, you've been an absolute fool. Oh, this is really... Uh, oh, this is really sad. She's really good in this. Oh. Oh, dear. I... S I sort of feel a bit. I, 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 I like the the fact that yeah she's um. There's quite an age gap though, isn't there? But she clearly loved him. Um. Oh, that's really sad. But you, I mean, you have been a bit stupid, Queen Gillia. You are. A, oh, and she survives, of course, doesn't she? Um, which is the sort of ultimate punishment, as, as everybody else I think dies, don't they? But. Uh, Galea's left to sort of rule her. Rule her. Oh, I feel a bit sorry for Susan Penn Halligan. We could have saved her. She's a very good actress. Bouquet of barbed wire. Uh, got on to be one of our, 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 our finest. She was in a Mark Gatiss Christmas ghost story a couple of years ago, wasn't she? Unrecognisable, but she's a terrific actress. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't quite know how... He's making all the stuff form from the ceiling. But this is great because, as a again, as a kid, yeah, you've got the Minotaur. I loved, because I'd read about Myths and Legends, I loved the fact that the Minotaur turned up in Doctor Who. If there was anything that I already knew about in a Doctor Who story, you know, that was great. Um, uh, and, of course, the Legend of Atlantis as well. It's like Pudding Lane at the end of the, the visitation. Anything that you've learned about at school that gets sort of... that's And that's a great that's a great image of the... Although she's not quite sure what to do, is she? Um, 
I think I might have been quite generous when anyway. Um that's a great image of the, you know, yeah, the woman who uh uh who who sold her husband down the river because she liked the handsome man with the beard. Why handsome stranger? Um everybody dead around her as the as her world has got you know, it's a physical and metaphorical and actual yeah, so I suppose, well, I know, but I suppose, I suppose Kronos will have finished his work because he has to destroy Atlantis, doesn't he? He's, he's very charming, the master, but he, he, the body count he leaves behind. Yeah, no, he's good. He's good, Delgado. He's, uh, he keeps it going. Um, yeah, so I don't know where the story goes for you. So we've destroyed Atlantis. Um, I do like the Master Central Corner. I, of course, have to choose something I like uh, from each episode. Um, there's good reasons for that. I think it's so... I think we live in very, very negative times. I find myself doing it. So I'm doing this as much for me as I am for you. I'm doing this for you. What am I doing for you? Talking rubbish at you. Uh, if anybody's watching this. Well, this could be the most pointless exercise ever. I could just be throwing stones at the moon. But if you are watching me, thanks for joining me. I hope you're having fun. Uh, um, I mean, I've thrown in some actor facts, haven't I? I've told you some sad stories. I like jo Joe's hair is quite how how have they done that I mean in within the story how have they done that to her hair because she didn't have that much hair she didn't have that much hair when she left uh, earth in the 20th century so uh, is everyone Atlantis in in a wig is that what they're saying did, would did Hippias really have a sort of peroxide skinhead underneath because they've all got the similar sort of thing going on and because Joe's got the same hair colour as Galea, where did the, did they all just get their hair from? One woman is there a woman beneath the depths of Atlantis? It's Rapunzel because it's all red hair. Rapunzel living at the bottom of Atlantis. Go, go on then, braid that, stick it on your head. Um, and Dave Prowse, who's the Minotaur and Darth Vader, he's an MBE, isn't he? Because he's done a lot for charity and the Green Cross Code man. So uh, this is one of the. Uh, few classic Doctor Who stories that has uh, somebody who has been honoured by the Queen uh, and I discovered what the earliest one was the other day I discovered an actor that nobody would expect to have been uh, awarded an honour in the New Year's Honours and I bet you won't guess it now uh, but we'll do it when we get to that story uh, uh, it's not even an actor you'd ever think about I, and it was a real surprise to me. Anyway, I like digging out a fact. I just do it in my spare time, you know. If I'm supposed to go to bed, if I'm not doing this, I'll just go, I'm going to dig around and find out about that fella. Or, um, and and it's worth doing because, as I say, it was only when talking about this a couple of episodes ago that, you know, people I said, oh, we can't find them. Well, we couldn't find them then, but you might be able to find them now. And having a sort of, having a refresh and just a reminder of, oh, God, you know, um, uh, bears fruit. Because I uh, tomorrow I am posting a letter to Wanda Moore. Let's see if she replies. I will have to wonder more, no more, about whether she wants to talk about Doctor Who or not. Um, but it could be that I get no reply. So we'll see. If she does reply, I will read her letter at the end of this or something. Do it as a bonus. That's... Um, So, they, yes, of course, they've landed in... Uh, we're going to get the face of Kronos, aren't we? Which I seem to recall is quite a it's quite a witty moment. Uh, and I believe it was the director's idea to have it uh, sort of... Have Kronos as a, as, a, as a beautiful young woman rather than some wizened, old, traditional godlike sort of thing. Uh, but it was, it was an uncharacteristic lapse at the start of the episode, wasn't it? That, that Minotaur scene was, um, was a funny old thing. Although it, lo it looked good. But when you're, when you're on film, you've got much more control. So, 
Yeah. The, the... But that said, I, I, and I, did, I don't think I finished. It's a very Doctor Who thing to do to go. Oh, it's a it's a minor to I'll do it like a bullfight, and it's the Doctor with his red cloak. I, I, I even though it wasn't brilliantly staged, that's a witty idea. It amuses me. <laughs> and Pertwee can do it. Pertwee can do things that other people cannot do. Pertwee can do things that if I tried to do them, I'd look like a twat. Um, yes, every, you usually look like a twat. Yes, thank you, everybody at the back. Um, yeah, I, I... Yeah, this is... This, 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 this gives the ending a slightly different quality, having... Have it, have and and it, and and it, sort of accomplishes that thing of the multifaceted nature of anybody, but also you know a time god, a, a, a time god, a, a, yeah, a, a, a time gobbling uh, intergalactic budgerigar. Uh, but I know I think I think Kronos is a is a is a good god. I've got to think of two things for this. I've got to think of two things for uh, this because this episode six and the uh, the bonus thing. Now, some people don't like the way that Delgado acts this final scene, but I've always thought it was OK. It will be interesting to see what I think of it now. And I love that image of, again, the yeah, hang on, he's doing this. No, that's fine. That's fine. He's 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 begging for his life, even though we later find out he's being a bit sneaky about it. It's fine, and I love the fact that well, I do I? I mean, the fact that the Doctor always spares the Master, who then goes on to kill gazillions of people. You, you are. It does make you sort of complicit, Doctor. It makes you slightly responsible. Anybody that the Master kills after you've gone, uh, could you spare him? Uh, is it, it's sort of on your hands. And you might need to account for that. Well, but the doctor, the third doctor spends his whole era moving towards atonement, though, doesn't he? That's what's very clever uh, uh, about his journey, if you like, uh, is that we go, oh, he's a bit of an arrogant, he's a bit vain, you know, he's a bit vain, he's uh, he's a bit full of himself, and he gets pu and he gets punished for that. Yeah, you screwed up there, Doctor. Really. Ah, oh, baby Benton. Now, this was reshot because the original baby, called Nicholas Mutton, was was fired. So when they shot this bit, they'd shot it with a dish seat shot. They'd shot the other bit with a different baby, and they got Darren Plant, bless him, uh, who who died at fifteen months. That's awful. No parent should ever outlive their child, but how sad. Um. But yeah, the original, the original baby, Nicholas. But I did actually spend some of last night, not last night, a couple of nights ago, trying to find Nicholas Mutton. What would I have said? Can I interview you about getting fired from Doctor Who as a baby? <laughs> Do you remember anything about it? I've asked stupider questions, to be honest, of people I've tracked down. But um, yeah, that's is that the best footnote in Doctor Who's history to have been Nicholas Mutton, the baby who was sacked. What, and we haven't got the foot. I wonder what he could have done so wrong. I mean, I've seen some grown-ups not, but I mean, in this very story, there are some performances. That it, was it was he really worse than Aidan Murphy? <laughs> oh dear. And they've unfrozen. Uh, the unit lot so is that so the brigadier is free I'll, oh i've just seen a boom but uh, is that because the restoration's given us more of the picture uh so oh, so tom tit has gone tits up uh and we're about to well well i yeah i know what's going to be one of my favorite bits because i love this ending i love anything that gives benton a bit of uh, a bit of a moment and he gets this is the season end isn't it so this is the joke that ends the entire year's worth of or the entire block 
the entire season. I used the correct word first. I don't know why they came up with two others that were unnecessary. Sergeant Benton waking up in a nappy. I. Yeah, I. Th I think we should have seen more of him from the front. Uh, uh, I love that ending because I love Sergeant Benton. Um, that was the t That's great. I like the Time Monster. I think. Um, it. Yeah. I. I don't think it has the best of its time in in Atlantis. I think. It. it it's hamstrung by a couple of aspects of Atlantis. Um, but I, but the very presence of Atlantis in the story makes the story more interesting. And at this period in the show's history, uh, you know, when it, there's a lot of 20th century Earth and, you know, labs and... Um, offices and things i think to uh look i'm not going to pretend it's i mean i've invoked dennis potter today i'm not going to pretend it's on a par with pennies from heaven but um it does what it's supposed to do which is cheer me up a bit uh, give me something to talk about give me something to think about give me new things to look at and it's got and it's got plenty of Doctor who -y stuff in it. It's got plenty of things to enjoy. But what are my things to enjoy? What did I like? Well, I certainly I like the ending. I like Sergeant Benton in a nappy. I, that's quite a strange order, isn't it? I'd like uh, two rounds of Sergeant Benton in a nappy, please. Uh, and I, I suppose I like... Although, actually, looking at it this time, um, she, she wasn't quite sure what, where to look or what to do with herself. Pitt, but I, 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 that that sort of image of uh, of the dis, you know destroyed Atlantis and the fact that the the, the the last person standing is actually the person whose um, duplicity was responsible for it all is was was a very nice touch. So yeah, qu last queen standing uh, and um, uh, and uh, Benton in his nappy are my two things what a alex moore's uh favorite thing about episode six and favorite thing about the story full stop my best thing about episode six has to be atlantis itself because it looks like some sort of rsc production or any other bbc period drama of the day it's the bbc at its best and i think it looks wonderful tim gleason i think did a brilliant job and my best thing, well, trivia, about the Time Monster is that the knight in part three, played by Greg Powell, had previously been a Auton policeman, but he's now an incredibly well-respected stuntman and coordinator, but this was one of his earliest jobs. For me, the Time Monster is an often overlooked story, and of course, who knew that Kronos had such good eyeliner? <laughs> Oh, and he's gone for a bit of trivia, because sometimes that is a nice thing about watching Doctor Who. It's not just what's going on on screen. It's the story behind it. And yeah, Greg Gregory Powell is a, is a is a hugely experienced stuntman with so many films on his CV. Uh, and he's, uh, and, and you know, uh, earned some of his stripes uh, on Doctor Who, because uh, the BBC, and rightly so, it's what it should be, a, a training ground for all those great creatives who are now, as I record this, uh, being told to retrain and get another job. <laughs> so I've got another job. It's becoming a podcaster and video viewathon guy. Uh, no, that's just what I'm doing in lockdown because um, one of the few things I can do is talk out loud about Doctor Who. So I'm doing it. I hope it's useful to you. I hope it's diverting or interesting or just makes you watch it and go, God, I'm glad I'm not him. Uh, anyway. Thanks for joining me for the time. I think if we can do the time monster, guys, I think we can do anything. I think it's going into things with the right, embracing them on their own terms. And I know this is a comic because sometimes you can be, you, uh, not just to you, you've seen it happen to colleagues who are very good. You know, if somebody's come in determined to not enjoy it, they won't enjoy it no matter what you do. And that's a lesson I try and learn myself to myself when I open my eyes and 
can't face the day or whatever or think oh this is you know they don't like me or this is bad or whatever well it's that's all that's all in there so actually the thing it's it, and it's easy to do with doctor who to just go actually i'm going to watch this on its own terms and i'm going to enjoy it and i'm going to try and do that with life as well and lockdown and everything that's being chucked at us it's hard sometimes but uh in, in, you know embrace it and we've embraced the time monster and it's been okay so and i've had two videos arrive today for stories that i've got loads of really good things to talk about so we're going to be all right thanks for joining me i hope that was all right sorry about the bits that weren't they're going to be inevitable in something that's not edited or um or uh, censored um anyway I'm off to Betty Buys. Good night. Sleep tight. Thanks for listening to Happy Times and Places with me, Toby Haydoke, and my special guest, Alex Moore. Special thanks to my patrons. This episode, they include Ruben Herfendahl, Rob Leonard, Paul Carrington, Andy Case, John Curley, Rob Dawson, James Gould, Andrew Jordan, Joe Llewellyn, David Matthewman, Stuart Mitchell, Nathan Moore, Melvin Pena, John Rivers, Keith Say, Len Stewart, Nick Temple, Apollo C. Vermouth, Gary Wales, Adam Westwood, Rich Wiggins, Michael Williams, and Stephen White. The music for this podcast was specially composed by Dave Gates and the podcast artwork is by Dylan Patterson. You can support these podcasts at patreon.com forward slash Toby Haydoke or ko-fi.com forward slash Toby Haydoke and by reviewing and rating very highly wherever you get your podcasts from. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, please do, and find out more at my website, www.tobyhadoke.com. Enjoy the rest of your day. Alex is on Twitter at AlexMoore99. More with an E on the end. AlexMoore99.